So today I thought I would do another live Q&A uh, here on my channel. I know I haven't done one for a while. So welcome if you're just joining me. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know in the chat or in the comments below if you're watching this video later on. Today, there's one question in particular that I wanted to talk about that I've seen crop up online. Also, I've been asked this question before, and that is, is it possible to use a pen fault detection device for a hot tub? Now, this is a question that I was asked recently, and as I say, I've, all, I've already seen this uh, pop up on, in some online forums. So I just wanted to give my thoughts on this. Now, the reason I've made this as a live stream rather than uh, a how-to kind of video is because this is a question that's quite difficult to give a definite answer to because there is not much guidance on this at the moment. And also, I believe that there will be a product standard for pen fault detection devices at some stage. So hopefully... That will answer the question. So today I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. Welcome if you're just joining us. Um, so my thoughts are on this are as follows at the time of recording this video. Um, also, I'm going to talk about places where we can't use PME, which I discuss in another video, which I'll put a link to at the bottom of this video if you haven't seen before. So here are a few points that I wanted to make. The first thing to point out is that the only part of BS 7671 that I've seen that refers to pen fault detection devices is section 722, which relates to electric vehicle charging points. Now, if you were to install a hot tub, I think the section that would be most relevant would be section 702 for swimming pools and other basins. Or if the hot tub is indoors, then it might be section 701 for rooms containing a bath or shower that might be the most relevant. Now, even though these are all special locations, I think it's important to bear in mind that the various special locations have different requirements based on the risks associated with them. So locations containing a bath or shower um, are different to the risks associated with the installation of electric vehicle charging points, for example. Now, when a person is in contact with an electric vehicle placed outside, I think the person will likely to be wearing clothes and shoes, or hopefully. Um, so whereas a person using a hot tub will not be wearing any shoes and, and have lack of clothing and will, they'll be in contact with water as well. So I think the risks of an open circuit fault on the pen conductor is not the only thing to consider when it comes to installing hot tubs. So we really need to uh, bear in mind the relevant um, section in BS 7671, uh, which is 702. Um, and I haven't seen anything relating to pen fault detection devices in that section. I've only seen it in 7, uh, 722. So, um, there's the risk of potential difference between the Earth and the general mass of Earth also, and we would also have to consider the zones and what electrical equipment is installed in the area around uh, a swimming pool or other basins, just like we have in bathrooms. There are zones around them that we would have to bear in mind. So there's more to consider when it comes to um, swimming pools and other locations. Hi, everyone, if you're just joining us, um, welcome to my channel. I'll ask you if you've got any questions at all in the chat. So the second thing that I wanted to point out is that Pen fault detection is fairly new in section 722 in BS 7671. It was introduced in Amendment 1 to the 18th edition in 2020. And at the time of making this video, there isn't a product standard or British standard number for them. So it's very important to check the manufacturer's instructions to see how they're intended to be used. Now, I've had a look on some websites uh, for some manufacturers, and they only mention EV charging. Now, bear in mind, I'm, I'm not familiar with... Uh, I admit that I may not be familiar with all of the manufacturers that are out there. Um, so it's really important to uh, bear in mind uh, to contact the manufacturer if, if you are using their equipment to see what it's intended for, to see how they intend to use it. But the ones that I've seen, it only specifically mentions EV charging. Um, and also I would bear in mind the wording. Uh, the words pen fault detection are not used in 722. Instead, they're described as devices that operate if the supply of voltage rises above a certain level or falls below a certain level, or if the touch voltage exceeds 70 volts. Now, 70 volts as a touch voltage seems quite high if we were talking about um, a swimming pool or other basin. Um, and I think the reason that it's 70 volts when we come to electric vehicles is because of the different risks. You know, a person is likely to have footwear on, for example. So that makes me wonder. Um, if they're suitable for use as, uh, in something like a hot tub or anything like that. So always check with the manufacturer. Now, having said this, there may well be products in development that may well be um, more suitable or, or may may well be uh, um, uh, suited for that. And there may well be um, devices that are sort of in, in manufacture and being worked on at the moment. The only time we'll know this is when uh, is, is when the product standard comes out. Um, hi, Kev. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, thanks. Hope you are too, mate. Um, hi, everyone, if you're joining us. Um, so, so yeah, so that makes me wonder, 
if that touch voltage um, of 70 volts would be suitable, I don't think it would be. Um, I think that it's the reason it's 70 volts for EV charging is because um, it, it is because the person is likely to be wearing clothes. And so, so that makes me wonder if um, those devices would be suitable for hot, tub, um, for hot tubs. So always check with the manufacturer is, is the, the main point. Um, and so going on to my next point, I was just going to make here is that if we look in the uh, engineering recommendation G12 stroke four from the Energy Networks Association, we can see that there are types of installations where PME earthing is not permitted and somewhere it's not recommended. And on the wider topic of where we can use or can't use PME, I think it's important to bear the, the guidance in mind. Um, there are three different uh, bits of guidance. There's obviously this BS 7671. There's um, the guidance notes that I just re uh, just referred to, and also there's the um, the electricity quality and continuity regulations, which prohibit the use of PME for a caravan or a boat. So it's really important to bear that in mind that there are some places where we can't use PME, some places where it's not recommended. Um, and so I'll I talk about that in the previous video, which I'll link in the description below after uh, I finish this live stream. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. It'll be a bit of a flashback to before I grew the beard um, because that was about a couple of years ago that I made that video. So check that out if you haven't seen that. Um, so really, I think um, I think it's important to bear the guidance in mind. And I think the thing that I would say is that even though Section 722 and 702 are both special locations, they're, they're different locations, and I would always refer to the specific location. And I wouldn't assume that just because we can use pen fault detection for EVs that we could use it for a different uh, special location. And I, I would always check to see what the requirements are. Um, now, you may you may be thinking, well, why not use it as an additional method of uh, protection, you, you know, which is an interesting point. Um, you know, you may have your own thoughts on that, but I certainly wouldn't use it to replace something that is a requirement in Section 702. Um, so let's see if we've got any questions here. Um, Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so I, yeah, I hear what you're saying there, Daddy B. I think, you know, pen fault detection should be installed and paid for by the DNOs. It's their poorly, poorly maintained network cabling. That there is a, a question over is, is, I've heard people say this before, is it something that we should, as electricians, should be um, putting right, bearing in mind the concerns over, over PME? I think it's a problem, um, but uh, it's PME is the most common type of electricity supply here in the UK, and it's something that I think I think pen fault detection might be something that we might might see more of, but at the moment, I think personally, I I, I think I, I would like to see the product standard come out to so that we've got some more clearer guidance on on how and where to use it. Um, it's it's a very new uh, product, and I think it's something that's come out um, obviously with uh, electric vehicles being more commonplace and the, the problems with uh, with, with the earthing. Uh, I think with the PME earthing particularly, I think it's. Uh, it's, it's something that relates to that. And I think I wouldn't necessarily um, apply it to hot tubs personally um, without any specific guidance. Um, I just think it's a, it's a difficult question to answer this one, which is why I'm doing this as a live chat with you all rather than a, a how-to video. Hi, Gary. Thanks for joining us, mate. Um, so, so, yeah, so those are my thoughts on, on, on the subject, is that I wouldn't necessarily assume that we can use it on another type of special location where whilst we can use it on electric vehicles. Um, it's a difficult uh, subject, as, as, as I say. Um, I think when you're installing um, a hot tub, uh, obviously earthing is difficult, you know, earth rods uh, and earth mats and so on, which is why I think some people ask, you know, can we use um, can we, can we use the pen fault detection devices? But I, I would be careful. I, I would contact the manufacturer, see what their equipment is intended to be used for, and always check the requirements in section 702 in BS 7671. And I certainly wouldn't assume that just because we can use it for EVs, that we could use it for hot tubs or anywhere else for that matter, because it's, um, as I say, the risks in each of the special locations are different. And also bear in mind that caravans, it is, it is prohibited to use PME collection for caravans, and that's pre prohibited by the um, electricity safety quality and continuity regulations. And that's something that refers to the, the DNO's work, not necessarily what we do uh, so, so much, but it is it is a regulation that is an act of parliament. So it is a legal um, thing there that we need to bear in mind. So so, uh, so it's always important to bear that in mind. So going on, uh, I've talked about uh, the SQCR. Um, so I think until we have more specific guidance on the use of pen fault detection, I think my personal uh, my personal opinion is it's best to follow the guidance for each type of installation. Um, 
and and sort of go from there really um i'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this everybody if, if you have any specific thoughts on the pen fault detection or installing hot tubs or evs or anything like that um it'd be interesting to see when this is clarified when the product standard comes out and i hope that we can uh, get some clarity on this so we'll, we'll have to wait and see so let me know what you think in the comments um i, th I think that one thing's for sure is that we uh work in an industry that changes all the time we get we get a lot of um updates to the guidance and everything like that so uh, uh you know it's um i mean who, who knows when we'll get um the, the new uh new regulations coming out but we seem to be getting them every few years um so it's my thoughts are i definitely wait for more guidance when it comes to using pen fault detection devices um it may well be something that may well be more um more widespread in the future but we'll have to wait and see so that's my thoughts on that so if anybody has any questions let us know in the chat hope you're all doing well um if you're watching this video after it's gone live let me know in the comments and i'll see what i can do i'll see if i can make some more q a videos like this uh hi guys uh do you design to the current rating of 90 or 70 degrees when selecting xlp cable well, that's a good question so in order it's an interesting one because if you're going to buy swa cable you can only buy it in 90 degrees. The 70 degree cable was withdrawn some time ago. So you may look at it and think, well, why not use the 70 degree table in BS7671? But in order to use the 90 degree cable, you must make sure that the equipment that you're supplying is also rated at 90 degrees. Um, and that's because the cable can operate at a higher temperature. So I would always use the rating for 70 degrees uh, when, um, uh, and, unless of course I'm absolutely certain that the equipment that I'm supplying is rated at 90 degrees. Um, so I, I think I, that that's that's how I would answer that. But it's a good question because you may look at um, uh, in the regs book and see the ratings for 70 degrees and 90 degrees and you, you you may look at it and you you buy a drummer cable and it says 90 degrees on it so so that may be the first thing that you that you turn to but it's really important to bear in mind that the equipment needs to be rated 90 degrees as well uh, and it's important as well because if you look at the tables for 90 degree cables you can see that they can car carry more current than the 70 degree cables because they're able to operate at that higher temperature so it's a good question, Gary. Thanks for that. I um, hope that helps uh, anybody who's watching. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Um, in the meantime, I will put that, a link to that video before my previous video about places we can't use PME earthing. And uh, I hope you find that useful. Um, it's certainly something that I think we're going to hear more about um, in, in the future. Um, interestingly, I was um, I, I had an um, electricity uh, um, service um I had a new electricity service installed at a property recently um, and uh, watch, watching the guys from the DNOs do their work and they put the earth rods in because it's a PME, they put the earth rods in next to where they do their, their, their joints. So it's really interesting to see how they do that. Um, and and it's, it, unfortunately, it is the most common type of electricity supply here in the UK and it does cause a, a few concerns um, and I think it's probably something that we're going to hear more about. So anyway, if if nobody has any more questions, I'll end the live stream, live stream there. If you're watching later on, then please give us a question in the comments and I'll talk to you again soon.